Daredevil episode four in the blood. Yeah, we have made it to episode four in the series, and I am as excited as I was when I started this series. Like I've already mentioned in the past, this is shaping up to be one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Top ten, at least, at the very least. And going into In the Blood, I'm just anticipating this to be as good as the first three episodes. But hoping for a lot more action. I mean, same amount of action, but maybe maybe more. Who knows? Um, as well as a lot of drama, a lot of certain scenarios, uh, predicaments that Daredevil slash Matt Murdock gets himself in. And just some of that good Daredevil stuff I have have come to love from the past three episodes we have watched together. It's a very intriguing show, and like I said before, I'm going to keep repeating myself until I see Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox, and the MCU or something, or I see Daredevil be revived with the same actor. It's a shame they only got three seasons, because the first season is shaping up to be a great season. So it's just making me anticipate for the second season as well as the third. So, as I said, In the Blood, Episode 4... I'm just guessing now, this this is not really a running gag with the boxing terminology as the titles of the episode, so I, I think they're just going off certain scenarios that are going to happen in the episode. And so for In the Blood, what I'm going to be expecting, just a lot more gore probably. Um, I don't know how they could get gorier from uh, the third episode, <laughs> but uh, they probably can. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely can, but episode three... That scarred me a little bit. When Healy stabbed his eye through that stake and it went through his whole freaking head. Yeah, I'm sure they could get gorier than that, but I'm just hoping they don't. Because that was pretty disturbing for me. I mean, coming from a guy who does watch horror movies off and on, not as much as probably other genres, but on occasions I watch horror movies. That is pretty sick and twisted. Um, Just thinking about how he thought, I know I stated in my last uh, review of episode 3, but just thinking about how he thought that was the only way out, he must mean Kingpin is just a really bad guy. And whatever he could do was 10 times worse than him stabbing himself in the head, in the eye with that stick. Um, But yeah, this scarred me. Not looking forward to seeing more of that, but also very intrigued to see what is to come. Uh, but yeah, guys, you know I'm here. You know what I'm about to do. I am here to react, commentate, as well as give a short review of how the episode holds up and see how well it does. Um, I'm just hoping it's just as good as the first three episodes, which I'm I'm pretty sure it will be. But other than that, yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into this episode. In the Blood, Episode 4, Season 1, Daredevil. Let's get to it. Let's go. Ooh, well this is not um, Hell's Kitchen in New York. It's a whole different uh, area now. What the hell is happening? Are they going to eat that guy? Oh my god. Was I right or was I right? Well, I wasn't technically right, but I was just speaking from uh, pre- my prediction. This is in the blood. Yep. This is getting gorier. Way gorier. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh, sh- Opening scene. Are you kidding me? Oh, a daredevil, huh? Yep. He looks mad. The opening scenes are just getting more and more intriguing. Okay, so Russia. Um, that's where we started off this episode, and now we're back in Hell's Kitchen, so has to be have to put two and two together somehow, and I, hopefully this episode explains it. Whew, man, Daredevil does not cease to amaze me. Oh, he's back with Claire. Huh? You know, he, I guess he now he has a hookup for uh, when he needs to get stitched up or put back together after his uh, nightly encounters. Uh, she, she just hits at the cat. <laughs> uh, like Batman. Yeah, man, you need to. Dude, you can't keep putting your body through this sort of stuff. Um, it's not healthy. You're gonna, I don't know, you're gonna kill yourself, honestly. I mean, I know he doesn't have as much money as Bruce Wayne or something. I know I keep comparing the two, but it just seems they're very similar. And, um, I know he doesn't have as much money as him, but come on, man. You could afford a bulletproof vest at the very least or something. By come by, do you mean stumble and bleeding half to death? Uh, did he just catch that? <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, she calls him Mike, right? The, like her ex-boyfriend, <laughs> who uh, has a lot of secrets or something. No, I don't think he was lying. Uh, from what we saw in the last episode of him uh, taking the easy way out, um, yeah, I don't think he was lying. Hopefully nobody sees him walking out of uh, her apartment. What's this now? It's like a chop shop? Oh, it's one It's one of uh, Fisk's, yeah, and the Russians. It's one of his other businesses, probably. Low-key businesses. Huh. Daredevil is catching up. You guys better uh, take precautions. But he, um, uh, God, uh, but the guy with the glasses doesn't seem so concerned about that. Interesting. I don't know if he's, he's the right one to call them weak. I mean, like, Daredevil found out his um, client's name, so it seems like there's a flaw in his corporation as well. Or operation. Huh. Definitely get off his ass. That's what he's basically saying. Oh, seems like there's a little conflict going on between uh, the Russians and uh, Fisk's um, right-hand guy. That's not good. Well, that's probably uh, good on Daredevil's part, but not for them. Oh, here we are. Hmm. I mean, I understand where he's coming from. Like, I know they want to cover the story hand-in-hand, uh, -hand, both of them, but... Uh, he has to save his own ass. Like, if he reports on a story that's fake or, like, not even not even um, worth reporting on, he could probably lose his job. Or worse, um, I don't know, probably be, like, blackballed by the whole uh, reporting corpora uh, jobs and corporations. Why isn't anyone looking into this? You don't understand how lucky you are. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Oh, oh is he not going to help her now? Come on. True. Okay. Very true. That's hard to argue with. Huh. Wow. Oh, okay. So that's the reason why she went to him. Hmm. So he was probably a lot more hungrier back then and wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Now it's like uh, he's just getting old. <laughs> Doesn't want to take those risks anymore, which is understandable. Dude, they're gonna kill this guy. Oh my god, dude. No loose ends, I guess? Oh god. Damn. He's a good knight. They're not gonna have to worry about him anymore, are they? Oh shoot! Oh, they're not gonna kill him! No, that was uh, that was like a, an adrenaline thing, you know, like where you put it in them and it's supposed to bring them back to life for a little bit. <sighs> kind of like in uh, Pulp Fiction, where um, uh, John Travolta stabs Uma Thurman in the breastplate uh, to bring her back from that cocaine overdose. It's Daredevil. I, I already knew that, though. Shoot. Hola. Oh, no. Is he going to get kidnapped? No, please don't kidnap that guy. He's so innocent, I feel. But they just broke into Clara's place, huh? That's why superheroes always gotta wear masks, so they gotta protect the ones they love. What what movie was that from? That was from a superhero movie. Why am I blanking on that? I know it too. If it's if it's Batman or something, I'm gonna be mad that I forgot that that was in there. But I know it's from a superhero movie. That line. Oh yeah, it's from The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's from The Dark Knight Rises. Can't believe I forgot that, but it is. It's when um, Bruce Wayne, uh, Batman, talks to uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, saying that if you want to do good, you got to put on a mask. He's like, I'm not scared. And he's all like, it's not for you, it's for the people you love. That. Mm. Oh, he's going to go back to the art gallery? He really does love his art, doesn't he? Well, hello there. Oh, is he back for her? How are you enjoying Rabbit in the Snowstorm? I hung it in my bedroom. Hmm. It's the last thing I see every night. That's either very romantic... Very sad. Uh, I like to tell myself it's the former. <laughs> it's the former. Yes, I was actually wondering if you cared to join me for dinner. Uh, I'm the only one working here tonight. He's kind of awkward, isn't he? You're not going to offer to buy every painting in here so I can close up early. Uh, I actually tried that once. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, I kind of agree with that line. Fist spitting some game right now. Oh, so they're kind of they're kind of giving him more depth than uh, the Michael Clark Duncan version in uh, Daredevil with Ben Affleck, the 2000, 2003 version. Uh, so they're kind of humanizing him. That's kind of interesting. I'd like to see more of his character then now, because I thought he was just going to be a big baddie. But um, him him going out on a date with uh, Vanessa, I think her name was. All right, so uh, we're kind of seeing a different side to Fisk. Uh, oh shoot. <sighs> Nobody's safe. Nobody's ever safe. Mom wanted me to be a butcher, you know that? Oh, not the butcher story. I said, no, Mom, I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> no, not the butcher story. That means he's said this more than once. Bailing out a pissed drunk electrician and nearly burned his house down. Let's cross. What if we're doing this all wrong? What? What are you... and Zach was the way to go. You hated interning now. You uh, hate being broke. See, this is something I kind of... This is a battle I have with myself. I know money is a, is a lot. It means a lot in this day and age. But... Don't you think, like, going to a job every day, day in and day out, you should go to a job that you actually enjoy doing? I know money is important, and maybe for the time being, maybe just do a job that pays very well for the time being, but in the meantime, maybe in the future, try to get a job that uh, you could see yourself doing for the long run. I, I believe life is, uh, you're supposed to be happy, and why not go to a job that actually makes you happy? So if Foggy's not happy being a lawyer, I don't know then. Ah, oh, shit, they're stuffing her in the freaking trunk. Come on, man. How cliche can you be? Oh, she's sketching the person. Uh, <laughs> he's helping her then. Jesus. <laughs> You're such an amateur. Hmm. Win something. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, you don't want to give yourself away like that. Oh, he's actually helping her, though. That's okay. Oh, and he's gone. Like, uh, Daredevil. He's right, though. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb if you're just there uh, writing stuff down at an auction and not even bid on anything. Oh, he's on a date now. I don't, just from looking at him right now, he seems like he might have anger management problems. When I was a kid, I used to dream what it would be like to live somewhere far away from Hell's Kitchen. Why would you want to live away from uh, New York? New York's awesome. What made you say? No, I didn't. When I was 12 years old, my mother, she sent me to stay with relatives. Damn, giving her his whole life story on the first date. Very trusting. But you came back. I realized that the city was a part of me, that it was in my blood. He's almost unrecognizable from his role at in Law and & Order and, like, other movies because he has facial hair, hair on the top of his head, and just, like, God, he looks totally different. Oh, shoot! God damn! Just say the fake name you gave him, Mike. Oh, God. This is gonna be a badass moment, isn't it? Uh, I'm ready for this. Dude, you're not gonna get him. He's too good. I have been so intrigued by Daredevil and Batman lately. I don't know why, because after watching these episodes, it's just I see so many similarities. Except for, like, you know, the billionaire part with Bruce Wayne. But, um... I've been looking up some stuff on YouTube about like how um, who would win in a fight, Daredevil or Batman, and it seems like the majority think Batman. But I honestly think Daredevil would put up a pretty good fight against Batman, and I would just be very intrigued like if Disney and Warner Brothers ever did a crossover of uh, Marvel and DC movies, they would have to have Daredevil and Batman in a movie, and I would like to see them fight. I, I think it would just be very entertaining. Probably proved to be a very awesome fight scene warner brothers disney maybe make it happen someday oh, god damn oh did he break it oh nice hit good job claire uh, yeah it does actually i mean would you rather get fired or killed oh Oh, okay, so he seems like a pretty good guy then. I was uh, right in my assumption earlier in the third episode. Hmm. Oh, he's, he's, he's helping her. He's, he's teaching her the ropes.
but I can. But I'm not saying anything. Oh, is there? See? Yep. He's, uh, Daredevil is really ruining what they have going on right now. And it's making me happy because, like, to see the good guys triumph over the bad guys and see the bad guys kind of getting a little frustrated with certain things, eh, it's a good feeling. When I was a kid, I loved it. Dude, I kind of don't want to like Fisk. I, I know, I mean, I don't kind of, I don't want to like him, but from what they are giving us on screen right now, it's kind of like it's hard not to relate to him in a certain way, especially going on, like, a first date and stuff. Who are you? Uh, there you go. Tonight, I'm just a man. Hmm. Enjoying the company of a captivating woman. He's been disposed. He's been to go. Now, I'm sorry. We want to tell you, my brother and I, we gratefully accept. Wesley will take care of you. Oh, my God. Did you see how many people got up as soon as uh, the Russian guy uh, went into the room? That's that's how many uh, uh, people that he has backing him up. Like bodyguards and uh, just his uh, entourage. Charge it to the office, but don't freak out. Okay, I got a thing. Uh, some money coming in from. I ever tell you my mom wanted me to be a butcher? Sorry for getting you into this. Exactly. Yeah, uh, it must be feel, feel horrible. Putting my house at risk. My choice. You can ask me to pull you from that dumpster. Tell me it was worth it. Tell me that you've got a plan. I'm not just trying to make my city a better place. I mean, like you've been uh, you've been doing a lot of good, man, and so. To see this, like, um, you gotta come up with a plan, cause like, you have been uh, making a nuisance for the bad guys, and so to see that you don't know where to go from here, I mean, you should have walked into this with a plan, and I'm pretty sure you do in the back of your mind. You know what where you're gonna go from here, but I like like I'm thinking right now, like if you keep knocking at the devil at the devil's door, pretty soon someone's gonna answer you, like they are right now. So you better be ready for it. Yeah. You can. For all of us, Mike. Mike. You gotta tell her your name, man. Matthew. There you go. See? I knew exactly when he was gonna do it. My name is Matthew. Trust. That's the beginning. Trust. Very interesting date. You again, and I'm sorry that our <sighs> night went sideways. He looks mad. But hopefully he doesn't flip out. But yeah, I don't I don't want this to end for him, because uh he might take it out on Daredevil. And that's bad for Daredevil. God, all this happened on the first date. It's a big red flag. Oh, well, then you'll see her again. Dude, is he gonna cry? The man in black. And <laughs> so Johnny Cash? They're gonna kill him. Oh shoot, they're gonna kill him. Poor guy. Well, not poor guy. He's a bad guy. But I mean, like, he doesn't know what's gonna come here. Oh, okay, maybe not. They're not going to kill him. Or they are. Yep. Oh, shoot. Yeah, he, he's not taking it out on Daredevil. He's going to take him out. Take it out on this guy. So his date didn't go well, and he's going to take out all his frustration on this Russian guy. Oh, God. This is going to kill him. All right, the humanization is going away now. And the guy, and the guy with the glasses just sitting there is like, yep, I've seen this before. I know what to do to stay here. He's gonna crush his head in the door, isn't he? Oh no, come on, man, come on. This is just overkill. Daredevil has a handful with this guy. Throw him in the river. Oh, shh. I welcome it. <laughs> he doesn't even care. Uh, this escalated really quickly. Damn, damn. The endings of these episodes, man. They're just, there's something else. Episode 4, In the Blood, Daredevil, Season 1. Yeah, n not not even gonna say it. It just did not fail to disappoint. Um, this time we got to see a kind of an in-depth look, finally, at Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin. And we got to see him going on a date, which was really interesting, because that was not what I was going to be expecting for his first introduction into the series. And they didn't wait too long to introduce him, which I'm pretty happy about because I knew I had a huge feeling. Because I knew um, Fisk was in this show. I just didn't know if he was going to be the big baddie or he was going to be like a side character. Um, but yeah, I already knew that uh, 
he was going to be something interesting. And uh, yeah, it did not fail to disappoint, especially with the way they introduced him on that first date, him getting intrigued by that woman, uh, Vanessa, I think her name is, who sold him the painting in uh, the end of season uh, or episode three of season one. So he went on a date with her. He asked her out and she agreed. And that's where we got to finally see him interact for the first time. And um, I'm just pretty curious about his backstory honestly i mean i feel like they kind of explained it especially with him as a kid and wanted to get out of hell's kitchen him explaining it to vanessa so we kind of got a little gist of his backstory as a young child and i just want to know how he became the kingpin he is today and i feel that will be explained in further episodes which i'm looking forward to but finding out that he is very humanized in this uh, episode as well because I was not expecting that to be sympathizing with him in certain ways but then by the end of the episode we got to see him take on that persona of Kingpin uh, especially with uh, beating that Russian guy to a bloody pulp by slamming his head against the the car in the door so uh, that every ounce of sympathy I had for him from that date he went on uh, with that woman it kind of went out the window after that encounter with the Russian. Because I understand why he was mad. He was mad that he interrupted his lovely date with uh, that woman that he so happily really likes. And so I guess he just really took out all the frustration and anger of uh, that guy who interrupted his date out on him. Uh, as, uh, I was not expecting that, though. I expected uh, the Russian guy to die when he was in that car with uh, his right-hand guy with the glasses. But... I, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting... Because uh, once uh, the guy said, the guy with the glasses, I, I said his name before. I, um, I'm just blanking on it right now. But the guy with the glasses, uh, when he said that Fisk wants to talk with you, I thought, oh, maybe maybe he's not going to die. And then as soon as the door opens, uh, the Fisk pulls him out of the car, and I know uh, shit's not going to be good for that guy. And uh, it totally wasn't. But yeah, I think my biggest like from this episode would have to be the introduction of Fisk and how they chose to introduce him and how he was brought into the scene of the Daredevil uh, universe uh, for Netflix. And I enjoyed it. I was not expecting that. I was expecting more so of the Michael Clark Duncan uh, type of Wilson Fisk we got in the 2003 movie Daredevil. But... Even though he is similar to that in the brooding, kind of aggressive, killing people way, like choking them out, like uh, beating their head uh, against the car and uh, just ripping ripping their throats out from them like we saw in the movie. Yeah, uh, I like this portrayal of Wilson Fisk so far a lot more than what we got in the Daredevil movie in 2003. Nothing against Michael Clark Duncan's portrayal. It was perfect for what the movie was, and that's probably how it was written for him to be portrayed, uh, Michael Clark Duncan. But no, no, good job on his part. But I'm just saying I, I appreciate this portrayal more. It just seems more in-depth, more gritty, more intriguing, more, I don't know, hu like I said, humanized. It just, it shows more development in the character, and it just shows that, it's not kind of like a one-sided character, and he's just not very relatable. I, I don't know. Like You know Marvel has this problem where the villains are always the low point of Marvel movies, and that has happened in a lot of movies, except uh, probably Josh Brolin is the one exception to that. Uh, one, one, there's a few exceptions. Like Honestly, my favorite villain in the MCU is uh, Vulture. Uh, played by Michael Keaton. I think that was that was a great portrayal. I related to him in a lot of ways, and I think that's the best way to make a villain very appealing to the audience is if you can relate to him and you understand why he's doing these bad things. And so even though Vulture really wasn't a killer or like a, a bad guy for any of that reasoning behind the name bad guy, he wasn't really a brutal, bad, crazy, chaotic guy. He was just a guy trying to look out for his family the best way he knew possible and best way he knew possible was to scavenge uh, goods that were not being used by the higher ups and just steal them and take them for himself and sell it on like the black market or something like that. So I understood that he was just trying to look out for his family and I, I could relate to that probably because like I would want to look out for my family as well in that certain scenario. Yeah. And I can feel as we get introduced to more of Wilson Fisk, we will probably see a more 
developed Wilson Fisk than we got in the movie. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think he is the highlight of this episode. And I'm just very intrigued to see more of him in further episodes. I'm, I'm going to have to name, I'm going to have to say his name because I think it's just brutal that I cannot say his name, uh, the actor. Let me try saying his name. It's just very hard for me, his last name especially. Vincent D. Onofrio. Onofrio. Uh, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm going to have to look it up later and uh, uh, hear the correct pronunciation. But I, 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 like I've said, I've seen him in so many stuff. He's been in Law and Order, Men in Black. Uh, I think the most recent movie I saw him in was Chips. <laughs> it was on. It was an HBO Max streaming movie, and I thought, why not? And it was kind of funny. I didn't hate it, but yeah, he was in that movie. He played the bad guy, and um, yeah, Vincent D. Onofrio. Great portrayal of Wilson Fisk. An excellent actor. I feel like he is overlooked because I've seen him in so many character roles. And I think this guy can just play any role that is given to him. And I think he's a really underrated actor. But props to him. Uh, so far, he's doing a great job at uh, portraying Wilson Fisk slash Kingpin. And I just look forward to seeing more of him. But yeah, as a whole of this episode, I, I liked it. It kind of went more in depth of the repercussions and the circumstances that are going to come along with Daredevil poking his head into a world that is full of bad things, um, sex trafficking, child trafficking, drugs, uh, guns, chop shops, uh, just like bad things, bad black market things. And it, we are seeing the repercussions of that happening as we could see with Claire being kidnapped. And he, he just needs to figure out a plan, which we saw his um, encounter between him and Claire after he saved her from being kidnapped. And I feel like he does have a plan in the long run, but at, as of now, he was probably just caught off guard because he never thought that the people that he knew would ever be captured or taken for ransom on his behalf. And he, he I know he never wanted anybody to get hurt or in, uh, in trouble because of him. We are seeing a more in-depth kind of humanized i know i'm using those words a lot but i feel like this episode really just is making daredevil seem like a realistic character a lot more realistic character than we got in the movie and these certain circumstances situations is it could happen to anybody and so that's why i really like this show it's just because like i could feel like daredevil could be real in in a certain way i feel like daredevil could be a real life character and this show is doing a great job at portraying it like that. It's not like the MCU where, like, even though there might be some situations where, like, you could see real-life situations in those movies, uh, it's just mainly fictional stuff. In the Daredevil TV show, it's just, like, it might be fictional, but if there was a guy dressed up like this, I, I would believe it. I, I think it could be really true. <laughs> Uh, as well as um, uh, something else that was talked about in this episode, Karen and her um, communication, her like agreement between her and Ben Yurick. I know I forgot his name earlier, but Ben Yurick. Ben Yurick and Karen, yeah, they were trying to work up uh, a way to bring down these higher up people who tried to frame her for the death of the guy in her apartment. And so like we saw that they were kind of having like a confrontation like he was all like you need to stop this and stuff like that. But like we found out the bigger plan of why he said that and what he his real intentions were with all this. So yeah, uh we're going to probably see more of them work together to kind of like bring down these people as well. So not only is Daredevil doing his part, Karen is doing her part her part as well. And um, yeah, and now we finally got to see Fisk. So this episode introduced a lot of situation scenarios in, and I appreciate it. I think it was put on the screen perfectly. I don't think it was overdone in any way. And I think it was great. Uh, and not a, not as much action as we got in the past episodes, but that's fine. Uh, sometimes we need a little more talk and a little more drama, and that's totally fine with me. But what I give this episode as a whole, I would give it a solid. A minus. Does this episode hold up? Of course it does. Um, it, like I said, it, it just really humanizes a lot of characters and makes you believe that Daredevil could be a real person. I think that's great that a show can do that for a person, especially for me. Um, so I think it's just great and uh, it does hold up in every aspect of the meaning. In the Blood, uh, Daredevil Episode 4, Season 1, definitely holds up. Does a great job. Nothing really lacking in this episode except for maybe... A little more action, but that's fine. So yeah, hold up, check. A minus, check. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoyed my reaction, my commentary, my short review, if you will, uh, maybe hit that like button. Really does help the channel. As always, makes me know that you guys are enjoying this series as well as my content that I've been producing. 
Uh, I know I've been focusing on the Daredevil a little bit, but I, don't worry. I will make more reactions to other um, films and TV shows in upcoming videos. But at the moment, I'm just yeah focusing on uh, Daredevil for a little bit. But don't worry. This, this uh, channel is going to be very diverse. And if you guys are intrigued by knowing what other movies I will react to, commentate, as well as review, maybe hit that subscribe button. It will, as always, help with the channel, help it grow, but as well, notify you guys after you subscribe about when I post new videos. And after that, you guys won't have to do a gosh darn thing. Just check the notifications as well as subscribe list, and you will see my new videos uh, weekly, as always. I mean, like I post more videos every week i know it hasn't been consistent i started off with three i think it's two now and like but i'm just trying i'm working with school and stuff like that so uh just bear with me but i will try to make a more consistent schedule but as of now it's like it's really from at least one video a week to two to three and so so on so but as always guys yeah uh leave down in the comments what you guys thought of daredevil episode four uh in the blood what do you guys think of wilson fisk played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, tell me what you like about his portrayal, if you like him over Michael Clark Duncan's portrayal, and what do you think of him as an actor? I think he's the highlight of this episode, and I just really enjoyed what we saw on screen with him. But yeah, guys, leave down in the comments your thoughts, and I will read them, uh, as always. But as always, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. But until then, I'm going to leave you with a peace.